In this first video of our two-part series on oxidation reduction reactions, we are going to learn about oxygen exchange in oxidation reduction reactions. In a chemical reaction, oxidation is oxygen gain and reduction is oxygen loss. First, let's look at oxidation. A good example of oxidation is a combustion reaction. Hydrogen is a clean fuel that works by combination reaction with oxygen. Energy is released as bonds are formed and this energy can be used to power cars or appliances. Oxygen also combines with metals. When oxygen reacts with iron, the iron is readily oxidised. Do you know the common name for Fe2O3? Maybe try thinking about what happens to iron metal after it is exposed to air for a long time. You probably got it. Fe2O3 is rust. This is why things made of iron are often coated with other metals, such as zinc, in a process known as galvanisation. Of course, zinc can still react with oxygen to make zinc oxide. In fact, it reacts so quickly that the iron galvanised with zinc cannot oxidise because it is coated with a protective layer of zinc oxide. You can make this reaction go even faster by applying heat. The heat provides some of the energy required to break bonds before new bonds can form, the activation energy. Haemoglobin in blood carries oxygen around the body by oxygen exchange reactions. Four iron 2 plus ions sit in the middle of a porphyrin ring. When oxygen binds, the iron 2 plus reversibly oxidises. The negatively charged oxygen is called a superoxide. When it gets to where it is needed in the body, it is released and the iron is reduced back to iron 2 plus. Now let's look at reduction. Remember, reduction is oxygen loss. Some oxides, when heated, release oxygen and are reduced. Back in the 17th century, people believed that heating a substance would always yield its pure elements. And sure, pure oxygen was indeed first produced by reducing mercury oxide. But what wasn't known at the time was that heating could cause either reduction or oxidation. It is very important that we are able to make metal oxides lose oxygen as pure metals that result from these processes have unique properties that are useful for industry. As an example, take a look into the blast furnace. In here, we can use coke to reduce iron ore, iron oxide, to iron metal. Don't forget, the coke used in a blast furnace is carbon coke, like coal, not a fizzy drink. Usually, the furnace is not hot enough for the coke to react directly with the iron oxide. Coke reacts with oxygen in the air to form carbon monoxide. Is this an oxidation or a reduction? Pause the video for a moment to work it out. Oxygen is gained by carbon to form carbon monoxide, so this is an oxidation reaction. Did you get that right? So what happens to the carbon monoxide next? It reacts with the iron to release pure iron metal. Simultaneous oxidation and reduction takes place. Iron loses oxygen, it is reduced, but carbon monoxide gains oxygen and forms CO2. It is oxidised. We have talked about oxidation and reduction in this video in terms of gaining and losing oxygen, using examples from industry and nature. Now it is your turn to explore other interesting examples you can find around you. In this video, we are going to learn about measures of electricity by considering an electrochemical cell. When metals form ions, they give away one or more electrons. Can you remember the charge on an electron? Pause the video and continue when you are ready. The correct answer is that electrons have a negative charge. When a metal gives away its electrons, they do so with a certain force. This force you measure in volts using a voltmeter. If you connect a strip of copper and a strip of zinc metal to a voltmeter in a solution of their ions and connect them by a salt bridge and a wire, you have made an electrochemical cell, also known as a battery. But technically a battery is a collection of cells connected together. 
the two metals connected in this way cause an electric current. This is because zinc is higher up in the electrochemical series than copper. This means that zinc can push away its electrons more strongly than copper can. As a result, electrons flow along the wire and through the voltmeter from the zinc to the copper. The flow of electrons is the electric current and is measured using an ammeter. Current is measured in amps. The more charges that pass a point in the wire at any given second, the higher the flow. Therefore, the higher the current. It is important that you remember that the electrons do not flow through the solution, only the wire. It's charged ions that move across the salt bridge. The voltmeter measures the force that pushes the electrons through the wire. Say that you replace the zinc metal for a metal that was higher in the electrochemical series, like magnesium. Can you predict what would happen? Pause the video and continue when you're ready. The correct answer is that magnesium would push its electrons away with a greater force towards the copper. This would cause a higher voltage reading on the voltmeter. Similarly, as a result of a greater force on these electrons, more charges would pass a point in a given second. This means that the current would be higher as well. Did you get it right? In summary, what have we learned? 1. Different combinations of metals connected in an electrochemical cell will produce different voltages. 2. The size of the voltage and the current is dependent on the metal's position in the electrochemical series. And 3. The further apart the metals are in the electrochemical series, the greater the size of the current and the voltages produced. In this video, we will look at the chemistry behind the production of iron from iron ore. This is the reactivity series of metals, which was discussed in this video. In early Earth history, iron, like all other metals, would have been found as an element in the crust of the planet. Later, when plants evolved that released oxygen, iron combined with this new reactive gas making oxides. This process would have taken many millions of years. Iron is found as the compound iron oxide, in the ore known as hematite. To displace iron from its oxide, we need a material that is more reactive than iron, inexpensive, and easily obtainable. Carbon ticks all of those boxes. Until the Industrial Revolution in the 18th century, the source of carbon had been charcoal, which contributed to deforestation in many parts of Europe. The discovery that coke, almost pure carbon, could be made from coal was a major breakthrough. Carbon acts both as a reducing agent, it can remove oxygen from a compound, and as a fuel to supply the high temperatures a furnace needs over 1,500 degrees centigrade to enable the reaction to proceed. The actual reaction is a three-step process. The carbon burns to produce carbon dioxide. The carbon dioxide reacts with more of the carbon to make carbon monoxide. The carbon monoxide then reduces the iron oxide to iron. The reduction reaction can be summarized as this. This reaction can be classified in several ways. This is a displacement reaction, as carbon is more reactive than iron, and so can displace iron from iron oxide. The reaction is also an example of a reduction reaction, where oxygen is removed from a compound. At the same time, carbon is being oxidized to make carbon dioxide. Iron oxide has been reduced to iron. As reductions and oxidation occur simultaneously, these are called redox reactions. The transfer of electrons, which is what chemistry is all about, can be tracked during this redox reaction, which gives another, more useful definition of what redox means. We look at how the oxidation states of iron and carbon change in the reaction. Iron begins in the positive 3 state and ends up in the zero state. Remember, all elements have a zero oxidation state. To achieve this, the iron 3 positive ion 
must gain three electrons. Reduction is gain of electrons. Carbon begins in the zero oxidation state and ends up in the positive four state. Carbon must have lost four electrons to achieve this change. Oxidation is loss of electrons. All of the electrons lost by the carbon atoms are given to the iron three positive ions. So we have reduction and oxidation, a redox reaction. To recall which way electrons move in a redox reaction, think of oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. Only metals below carbon in the reactivity series can be obtained by reduction of their oxide using carbon. Copper is extracted under less harsh conditions when compared to iron, as it's a less reactive metal. This in part explains why copper extraction was discovered well before that of iron.